What's up YouTube? It's been a little while. Um, I haven't made a video probably in a couple months and like I said in my last video, I just really haven't felt like it. Uh, I posted one a couple weeks ago, I don't remember, but that one was from a few months ago. I think it was a few months ago. But yeah, I'm just, you know, hanging out, chilling, doing whatever. I haven't really been playing a ton of video games until recently. I just kind of needed a break, just didn't really feel like playing anything, nothing was catching my eye, and so I just did some other stuff instead, caught up on some um, <clears throat> TV shows, and hung out with the family, and you know, all that jazz, so, but uh, lately I've been getting into some stuff again, I finished Uncharted 4, uh, right now I'm playing Valkyria Chronicles, I don't you can't really probably make that out very well behind me, but I'll be playing that as soon as I'm done with this video. But this video isn't about what I've been doing. Um, I guess I could have made a video for that, but I don't really care to. Um, I actually, this is a response video um, that I saw uh, Kit171 did a response to a YouTuber by the name of T-Rex Space Station. I have no idea who that is. Um, I just, you know, I like Kit's videos, so I saw he made a response video. So I guess this is a response to both of them. But T Rex Space Station, I guess, does like a community questions thing where he asks like five questions to the community. So I wanted to do a response because, you know, I, I thought it was cool and I could show a few things or whatever. <laughs> Um, one of these is something I got recently, since I haven't been doing pickup videos. Uh, I'm not going to probably do one anytime soon. I've just been putting everything away as I get it. I've gotten some cool stuff, but maybe I'll show some stuff somewhat soon. But anyways, uh, let's get to the community questions. Uh, the first one is a video game with aliens in it. And I decided to choose this one. Um, which is XCOM Enemy Within. Now this uh, Enemy Within is like a expansion to Enemy Unknown. Uh, this copy, PS3 and 360, comes with the base game Enemy Unknown. I haven't actually played Enemy Within, but since this is like the definitive edition, I figured I'd show this one in case anyone's interested. But uh, Enemy Unknown is awesome, uh, tactical strategy, like RPG, uh, where you have a uh, squad of um, soldiers and basically you're fighting aliens that have come to Earth. Um, it's not grid based, you move your characters where you want, but it's very um, dependent on cover, so you want to hide behind like, you know, walls or anything else your character can duck behind because being out in the open is basically a death sentence in this game but like all strategy RPGs you move your character you attack and then the enemy has their phase of attack and goes back and forth but this game is I mean enemy unknown is very very good um, you have a home base you go to between missions where you can upgrade equipment and get new uh, units and all that stuff and like most strategy RPGs when a character dies um, in this game they're just gone forever which obviously sucks when you've been working on building someone up for a while but um, I really really enjoy uh, Enemy Unknown it gets really really hard but the challenge is um, definitely welcome it's a very fun game so that is Game with Aliens in it uh, second up is a game that you got for um, a good deal, a budget, I don't remember what exactly the question was. Basically a game you got a good deal on. Now, um, I go garage sailing and stuff a lot, so most of what I get is fa fairly under uh, market value. But um, I decided to go with something recent I got and something I actually got from a retail store. Because you can still get deals at retail stores, especially if you take advantage of sales and stack stuff. So, um, Disc Replay is like my favorite store around here. They were doing a buy two, get one free on all disc games recently. And 
Um, I just went to grab a few things and I found a lot more than I thought I would. But um, luckily because flea market and garage sales and stuff off Facebook groups has been getting pretty good to me so far this year. Um, I've had a little extra money in the old PayPal. So I decided to grab a few things and I ended up getting Lunar 2, uh, Mars Matrix, and then this game for about $55 a piece after tax, which that's whatever on Lunar 2, but Mars Matrix and this one is a good deal. And that is uh, Giga Wing 2. Um, very, very nice copy. Um, definitely a lot less than it would have been on eBay. And um, I definitely have been wanting to build my Dreamcast collection up. Um, Dreamcast is one of the systems I'm focusing on a lot right now, along with Genesis and PS1. Um, be more focused and all that, but <clears throat> this game is fantastic. Uh, vertical shooter um, has this very cool play mechanic called like a, I think it's like the reflex system, where basically um, when uh, you have a meter and when it's fully charged, you press uh, I forgot what button it was, but it'll absorb all the enemy shots. And then it shoots it back out at the enemy and um, does a lot of damage. And then uh, besides that, it's your stereotypical shooter. Um, good music, good visuals, just a really, really good game. Uh, definitely pricey, but um, if you, for a good deal, it's definitely worth it. So, Gig Wing 2. Uh, number 3 was a game you've owned for more than 10 years. And... Um, I still have a lot of games from when I was a kid. Um, I had an NES when I was really young. And then I got a PS1 when that came out. So I still have a lot of the games from... I sold a lot of them, but uh, PS1 I kept a lot of the RPGs and stuff. And um, I still had some games from my NES. And this is a game that I've had um, probably over 20 years now um, my uncle gave us some games when he stopped using his NES and um, his NES I actually used to play all the time before we got ours and um, this game is one of my is is probably my favorite game on the NES uh, this is the copy that I used to play over his um, over my grandma's when he lived with my grandma and I still have it today and I absolutely love this game and that is uh, Super Dodgeball. Um, just a ton of fun. Um, it's dodgeball, but your characters can throw like special shots that are like super powered. And uh, basically, the story mode you just go through, single player mode, you go through. Um, you're the US team, and you just go all the way through and play uh, different teams from different countries. And um, <clears throat> it's a ton of fun, awesome music. Um, very good gameplay, so uh, Super Dodgeball, grab that. Um, it's like 15 bucks, so it's probably it's worth way more than that to me. So, uh, fourth question was uh, game with a good uh, soundtrack, and uh, this is probably an obvious one, but this game means a lot to me. This game got me basically into RPGs like a lot. Um, I played Final Fantasy um, 2 and 3 on the Super Nintendo before this uh, over my cousins, but this is like one of the first RPGs I owned myself and um, just made me fall in love with the genre, and that is uh, Final Fantasy 7. Um, I play this game a lot. Um, I've actually never beaten it, which um, I don't care. I I, I, I've been at the end to beat it, and I just don't think I, for some reason, I just stopped, or I don't remember why. I think I was maybe trying to fight one of the weapons, and I got sidetracked, but um, I've seen it beaten. I know I could have beaten it super easily, but um, the soundtrack to this game is phenomenal. It has a lot of sentimental value to me. Uh, the opening theme, the battle music, the victory theme... Um, Eris's theme, uh, I guess resonates with me more because I remember seeing, spoiler alert, Eris dies. Um, 
when Eris dies in the game, uh, which I did not even know that was coming, um, that was not spoiled for me, um, I was emotional for me as a kid, and the music just fit so perfectly, and then the um, music when you're riding around in the airship, just all the music is fantastic in this game. It's a fantastic game in general. Um, maybe I have the nostalgia glasses on, but um, this game was a huge part of my childhood. And the uh, last game is a uh, a game you are addicted to. Um, I don't get really addicted to a ton of games, um, especially now I don't have as much time to play. But when this game came out, um, I put in a ton of time into it. Um, it's actually the reason I bought a 360 in the first place, um, because I knew this was going to come out for it, and, um, that game is Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Uh, this is still my original copy. Uh, I played Morrowind before this on the PC, and then I got it for the Xbox with the, um, the Game of the Year edition that came with the expansion. Was it like, I forgot what it was called, but you could be like a werewolf in it. And I played that game a ton. In that game, the world is, seemed to be a lot bigger. And almost like things were more customizable. But when this game came out, I was just... I mean, I loved Morrowind, but I, I really got sucked into this game a lot more. Um, the graphics at the time were just mind-blowing to me. Um, just so much... I just love this freaking game. Um... I think when I got this game, I put like 60 or 70 hours into it in like five days, which probably a lot of people do, but I never do that with games. And I think like the first day I had it, I put like 16 hours into it straight, which is crazy for me. But uh, I definitely played the crap out of Oblivion. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I played Skyrim, I played Morrowind, but I don't think I played them as much as I played this one. So, anyways guys, uh, those are my responses to the community questions from uh, T-Rex Space Station. I'll post a link to both guys' videos. Um, you know, Kit's great. I don't really know much about T-Rex Space Station, but if Kit enjoys them, I'm sure he's pretty solid. So, anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.